This week, navigation menus are back on the menu. Yes, pun intended. Why? Well, because what was once a mundane optional feature is now a crucial piece of design that is vital to the success of any website. Initially, website menus are a navigational tool to help users find what they're looking for on our websites. And it's because of this basic functionality, because we know how users rely heavily on this feature, that both web builders and search engines have invested interest in how they work. And knowing this, we can not only create better user experience, we can even use this to our advantage. To misquote John Donne, no site is an island. We don't build sites in a vacuum, we build sites to draw traffic. And the way to draw traffic is by anticipating the behavior of our target audience. So when designing websites in general and menus specifically, we must remember that we are targeting two equally important types of audiences, humans and bots. Now, these bots are known as spider bots or web crawlers, and their job is to roam around the internet visiting sites, indexing the content that they find, and reporting back to search engines on the levels of user experience and content. Now, it's true, bots are designed to mimic human behavior when visiting sites in order to save human visitors time by gathering data that helps search engines point to the sites that are most likely to offer the best experience and the most reliable information. Now, having too many options in a menu makes it difficult for web crawlers to do their job and systematically browse and index everything that they find on our sites. And this is why ease of navigation is one of the most valuable contributors to this user experience and consequentially vital to our SEO ranking, boosting traffic and perhaps even rewarding us with rich snippets. So now that we understand the importance of navigation menus, let's review the primary styles of navigation menus on WordPress websites and understand when to use them and go over the important do's and don'ts while we're at it. Now, it's important to see these primary styles the same way that we think of primary colors, that they are just the basic components or ingredients that we can combine, mix and match in so many ways that eventually we create a vast array of variety. That part is up to us, you and me, and we should let our imagination run wild to achieve this. For now, we'll just be reviewing the primary styles, and I always believe that the best place to begin is with the classics, probably because I'm British after all. Now, a classic menu will typically appear in the site's header. On a one-page website, it could appear as part of the top section of the page itself. We usually classify a nav menu as classic when it's static, meaning that it stays at the top of the page and that's the only place that we're going to see it. And also because of its level of simplicity. There's nothing complex about the classic nav menu layout or design. We'll see category labels in the top level, each leading to drop down or cascading sublevels. The main advantage of the classic style menu is that users are extremely familiar with them, and therefore it will make life very easy for them and for our friendly neighborhood spider bots, making this a great choice for marketplace websites or websites with lots of categories of information. One downside to the classic nav menu is the amount of information that this style is usually synonymous with. And some users may find these menus tedious, perhaps overwhelming, and prefer to use the search option or even bounce altogether. This is especially true of a variation of the classic style navigation menu, the supersized classic menu, commonly known as a mega menu. To prevent our menus from taking a turn for the worse, don't have too many top level labels in your menu. This will most likely overwhelm users and appear too complex. And avoid this by having just a handful of categories that expand to larger families. If you're considering designing a mega menu, make sure that you have a large enough number of categories and subcategories to justify using this style. Don't make the font in your sublevel labels too big or too small. A good rule of thumb is to keep them the same size as the body text or slightly larger. 
And make sure that your categories are well labeled and organized and intuitive. Create visual differences between category labels and cascading sublevels using contrasting colors and typography. The main downside to this style is that it's not mobile responsive. Whatever style of menu we choose, we must always consider the mobile version of the site. In previous masterclasses, we've spoken about the importance of responsive design, especially now that Google has shifted its preference and higher ranking to mobile-first sites. These are sites that are initially designed for mobile and then adapted for desktop rather than the other way around. Now, what most web building experts do to solve this problem is create two types of menu in Elementor and using the responsive settings, they hide the non-relevant menu in the responsive mode. This way I can create one website, but the classic menu will be hidden when viewing the site on mobile. A very popular style of menu for responsive views is hiding a collapsible menu behind a menu icon, fondly known as a hamburger icon. As users and designers, we love this style of nav menu. It takes up an absolute minimum of screen space. It doesn't dominate the page. Moreover, it hides all the clutter of categories when all we want to do is focus on the content of the page, at least until the menu is needed. Then it's merely a matter of clicking or tapping on the icon to reveal a clear drop-down menu. Using a hamburger icon is a great way to go if you're designing a nav menu to contain lots of category labels. If you only have two or three categories, each leading to minimal or no families, maybe it's not the best idea to use this. When considering this style, we need to remember that we still need this little icon to be easily noticeable, so don't keep it tucked away. Make it easy for users to locate and use. And that means that within this collapsible menu, we also need to make sure that there is a clear indication of which segments expand into subcategories. This is equally true of the exit button or close icon. We need to keep it noticeable so users can exit or close the menu easily. Some designers like to stylize their hamburger icon, and I'm sure you've seen this as a hand-drawn icon or made up of several colors, and this is fine so long as it's recognizable as a menu icon. Remember, most users are not you, and their job isn't to figure out the way that we think. Unless, of course, we're designing a website for gamers, then we can practically hide everything. I mean, the gamers that I know can spend hours clicking around a screen just searching for stuff. If we are tasked with designing a menu that is always visible no matter where we are on the page, then what we need is a sticky menu. These are menus that seem to be stuck to the screen, floating above the page as it scrolls past. And this makes them perfect for long pages. The user will always have the navigation options right in front of them, instead of having to scroll back to the top of the page, which could be a long way off. Now, Turning a static menu bar into a sticky is easy in Elementor, it's just a matter of checking a box in the advanced settings. While these are a very popular style of navigation menu for both desktop and some mobile sites, there are some downsides to sticky menus. Most obviously, that a menu bar that travels down the page will continuously conceal a chunk of screen real estate. Some designs solve this by placing the menu in a section with low opacity or full transparency. Unfortunately, this solution is not always perfect. We must make sure that we contrast the colors of the menu bar with the colors of the page, otherwise our menu will disappear. Also avoid creating opposite extremes by using colors that clash. Again, we don't want to draw too much attention away from the page towards the menu itself. Then again, sometimes the goal of our design is just that, to steer the user to the menu. And if there's one style that has the best chance of upstaging the rest of the page, that style of nav menu is the pop-up. Now, many of you will remember that we used this style in our recently released travel agent template kit. A simple way to create these in Elementor is to place our navigation menu widget in the pop-up and then we add a button or icon on our page or in the header and we use it to trigger the pop-up by going into the button widget settings and using the dynamic options to set the button's action to open pop-up. 
As you can see, this is exactly the same way that we do it. Closing the pop-up is of course something that we define in the pop-up settings. This would be a good time to mention that if you're using this style, make sure that the close icon or button is clear and easy to use, especially in responsive mode. Now, all of these styles of navigation menu can be used both horizontally across the screen, top or bottom, and vertically down the side of the screen equally. Now, there is of course a debate among user experience experts as to whether or not vertical or side screen menus should be used. Those in favor of them will point out that we use them all the time. We even have one in WordPress. Those opposing side screen menus make a point that they are detrimental to mobile user experience. However, there are some great uses of pop-up menus that slide in from the side in responsive mode. Unfortunately, they are also less fashionable these days, though they still appear in sites that are designed to be viewed or scrolled horizontally like some portfolio websites. Now, our last style is one that, at least to my knowledge, only appears horizontally in either headers or footers, and this style is the two-tier menu. These are menus that appear in two usually contrasting tiers, rows, or sections, so to separate two or more menu widgets, groups of categories. Let's say that we're designing an online store. We could create a menu for clothing and accessories by gender, age, occasion, etc., and another one for our about FAQ pages and so on. We then build a header with two sections, and into each we drag a navigation menu widget and assign one of the menus to each widget. You can achieve the same result just as easily by using only one menu in one tier and adding button widgets or an icon list widget to the second. Again, there are those who feel that this style of menu is confusing to users. But personally, I find that this style is very convenient. In fact, if you've had a chance to check out the template kit that we released last week for online magazines, you can see exactly what I mean. This week, we looked at navigation menus, why we need them, how they can help bring users to our sites as well as bettering the user experience once they're there. We also looked at five different practical styles of navigation menu, any which could be combined to create something that we've never seen before. More importantly, we looked at the main do's and don'ts that we need to consider when designing and building a navigation menu all of which could probably be summed up in one indisputable rule. Keep it simple. As always, if you have any advice, tips or insight that could help other users, please share it in the comments below. And if you'd like to share examples of sites that have inspired you or that you've created, this is the place. If you have any criticisms, we are equally interested in your thoughts. And this is because we consider you, the viewers and community members, to be a valid part of the journey that we set out on with each Monday Masterclass. And if you've enjoyed this masterclass and you found it helpful or inspiring, then make sure that you click on the subscribe button and tap that bell so that you don't miss out on our next Monday Masterclass. After all, our goal is to be the best at helping others excel at their craft. Thanks for watching. Cheers.